I've become obsessed with a game I have never played. A game that has been on the back burner of my mind since I first heard of it years ago. A game that I can't shake no matter how many times I try and satisfy myself with lesser ones. A game so complex in its systems and world building that I can read about it for hours. This game is called Dwarf Fortress, and it has made me go mad. My infatuation with Slaves to Armok God of Blood Chapter 2 Dwarf Fortress started with two articles featured on Kotaku.com, How to Get into Dwarf Fortress, and 10 Gaming Let's Plays You Should Watch by Gita Jackson. I had read through the Let's Plays list and immediately boat murdered caught my eye. I had heard of the game Dwarf Fortress, but not the tragic tale of these doomed people. Seeing that it wasn't a video, I mean, come on, it's 2019 people, I planned on skimming past it and going on with my life, but instead I began to read a couple entries, and I was immediately hooked. Just like Gita, I had caught the bug, servitude to the blood god Armok. Dwarf Fortress is part management simulator, part roguelike, created by two brothers, Tarn and Zach Adams. Released in Alpha in 2006, they began development way back in 2002, while the brothers were working on Slaves to Armok God of Blood 1, a game that was actually not released. It was a more traditional 3D RPG that they described as a vast, random, complicated world that the player sets goals and the options are virtually limitless. The brothers looked to classic roguelites such as Rogue, Hack, and Moria as an inspiration for their randomness and had big plans for its other components. The outlines on their features page on their abandoned dev blog mention a randomly generated universe, working civilizations, and quote, complex magic system. Slaves to Armok God of Blood proved to be too complicated to continue, and the brothers shifted their focus to the sequel of their unfinished game, Dwarf Fortress, in 2004. Since I read through the Chronicle of Boat Murder's Demise, I have purchased Peter Tyson's book, Getting Started with Dwarf Fortress, and I even booted into the game once or twice. For me, reading and experiencing other people's moments with Dwarf Fortress is all the satisfaction I currently need from it. I'm compared to the excitement of planning a trip to a foreign country or outlining a new subpixel video series. It's the journey, not the destination. Unfortunately, most people are averse to playing Dwarf Fortress from the get-go. The ASCII art is something modern gamers are not used to and can be a bit confusing for the untrained eye. Everything in the game is represented by one of the ASCII characters and sometimes it may represent multiple things depending on the size, color, and capitalization. While the art style is easily changeable, thanks to amazing tile sets supplied by the community, actually changing it is a few steps too many for your average gamer. This is another area I think the announced Steam release will excel, streamlining changing art styles, but also implementing a more readable default tile set. Goodbye, ASCII. Dwarf Fortress, at its core, is a game about systems. There are systems in place ranging from the mental status of your dwarves to the health of Rodent's bright back leg. These systems of systems of systems are all contained in three game modes. Fortress mode, Adventurer mode, and Legends mode. In Fortress mode, you oversee a band of outcast dwarves venturing out to a new mountain home to thrive in the dangerous wilds around them. This is the mode that Boat Murdered is born from and where the real meat of the game exists. This game is brutal and one of the most popular mantras for it is, quote, losing is fun. In the turn-based adventurer mode, you play as a lone dwarf, making your way through the world free to visit fortresses and even complete quests. Now, the best part of Dwarf Fortress for me is Legends mode. When you start a new game in Dwarf Fortress, you're presented with a number of options, including the age of your world. Any guide you read will tell you to do around 250 years, but I've done up to 1,000, which I've immediately regretted when my PC locks up and I can't access it for like an hour. Once all those other settings are done, number of civilizations, number of beasts, it begins to create the history year by year. Now this isn't some funny text you see when a game is loading like, quote, planting trees or sharpening the swords. This is actual simulation. For an average game of 250 years, it can take up to 25 minutes, but that time may vary. As the world ages, it creates the number of events, historical figures, and the number of dead. This is what I love. It's sweet, sweet data, and it's absolutely incredible. Not only is all this information generated, saved, and stored, but you can view all of it. Every death, battle, structure, civilization, historical site, god, goblin, dwarf, is viewable and searchable, and it overwhelms me to even think about it. In my last attempt to get into the game, I generated a world of a thousand years, and probably spent a few hours reading through the entire history using a utility called Legends Viewer by Bay 12 Forms user Parker147. It really helps you look through all the information that is there, and you can easily lose yourself in it for a few hours, the same way you would lose yourself in a wikia. I'm not sure why any of this excites me, or why I really never sat down and tried to play the full game. Part of that is such a bold undertaking to learn the game. I mean, I had to buy a guide 
just to learn it. The other part is the amount I'm currently getting out of it, which is Legends Mode, is enough for me. I, I'm enjoying it immensely. I love to learn the lore of the fictional places. It's why when I DM for my D&D group, I get lost in creating tavern menus instead of the actual plot. It's stuff that doesn't matter to anyone except me, and I love it. Now really, this whole video was because I really didn't have anyone to vent to about Dwarf Fortress, so I kind of just wrote this thing and I kind of just set it into a microphone and, you know, this is what you're getting. I'm really looking forward to the scene release of this game, and I'm really looking forward to playing that game for hours and hours. When they get around to making some really simplified controls, probably putting in a mouse, and making a default tile set that, you know, is probably going to look good and probably going to make sense. Until then, I'm just going to be sitting here using utilities like Legends Viewer to see and read all about this amazing stuff, and I'll just be pouring over that fictional history and loving it. Oh, hello there. You've caught me practicing my reading. Boy, I sure wish I wasn't illiterate. Clearly you've enjoyed another Subpixel video. If you could like, comment, or subscribe, it lets us and it lets YouTube know that our content is worth watching. In the meantime, I'm going to get back to pretending.